Well, things look really good for the year. Um, the the oak is looking like it's it's flowered well. There hasn't been any late frosts that have killed off the flowers, so it should be very productive. Um, both the lower elevation live oaks and the, the higher elevation gamble oaks. Um, the cactuses are loaded with flowers and prickly pears that will be developing as the summer goes along. The choke cherries up in the canyons are just absolutely loaded with blossoms, look really good. Um, all the birds are very happy up there. We even saw a hummingbird nest with young in it already. It's it, Things are looking really good. Um, all of the yuccas are blooming. That is another bear food source that can be important at times. Um, there's a peach tree um, in this, this open area that used to be all, it was people lived here at one time in the past and there's peach trees and apple trees and some of this lower elevation stuff and they're loaded with peaches and apples. So things look like they're really developing well for this year for, for the fall food sources. As far as the summer goes, it's been green. We've had a reasonably wet spring. The, the winter wasn't that bad. So things are looking pretty good on that standpoint. The, the greener it stays, the longer the longer the bears will stay on the mountain. At this time of year, um, early summer and into the midsummer, they eat a lot of green grass and forbs. The young stuff that is just it's very palatable for them. They can digest it quite easily. Uh, it's the things that you see in a meadow, essentially um, dandelions and that kind of thing is is what the bears are going to be concentrating on early in the year. Um, they'll also eat leftover juniper berries, which are also having a, a really good year this year. It looks like there's going to be a bumper crop of juniper berries. Um, they'll eat a lot of that older juniper berries, any old acorns they can find, anything left over from last year, and all of those grasses and forbs. Moving on a little bit later in the season, once those grasses and forbs dry up, they really concentrate on insects. They turn rocks over, eat ants, get into ant nests, bees nests, um, wasp nests. They, they'll tear up logs looking for beetle larvae. You know, if they can if they can catch lizards and things like that, or grasshoppers, they'll eat those too. But that's it's those are very energetically expensive, and so they don't spend a lot of time at that. Um, they're just kind of make it or break it eating during that the middle the most hot part of the summer. Um, later on in the year, they will as it as the the fruit ripens and the the hard and the soft masts develop they'll move to acorns and choke cherries and any other fruit they can find wild strawberries wild raspberries anything like that the bear situation isn't that dire there's there's actually plenty of food out there right now we saw two places where bears were foraging within the last 24 hours while we were walking around one on bear corn which is a it's a epiphytic species it's basically parasitic on oak and uh, pinion roots bears love it um, they like it even more later on in the season when it develops a fleshy berry that they really enjoy and it's got a lot of nutri nutritional value. Um, right now, it's it's still edible. It's soft. They can eat quite a bit of it, and it's coming up everywhere. Um, there had been a bear foraging in one spot. There was another place where uh, juniper berries for, that had developed late last year were just falling off of the tree now, and a number of bears had been foraging in that area. It was kind of neat. It looked like, obviously, it was a very popular spot for bears this morning or last night. They're out there. Um, you just they're, at this time of year, they're they're doing what they can to find food. They're moving a lot. They're foraging on a lot of different things. We, you know, I was able on a fairly short walk on a very heavily used trail to see bear sign in a couple of different places. If you get into other parts of the mountain where there isn't as much human use, um, where there's water and where there's good food supplies, you have a pretty good chance of seeing a bear or running into one. We still have, you know, we have anecdotally lots of sign. Um, I saw plenty of bears in here last fall. Um, there's there's good forage conditions, and there wasn't there haven't been that many bears removed from this system in the last couple of years. So there's bears here. Things are looking good right now, um, at least on the Sandias and and in other parts. We have had a significant late moisture. Um, the the snowpack wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. It's, things look good. We didn't have the late frosts, which are the biggest problem a lot of times for killing um, bare forage materials. And it seems to me that the plants here almost look like they're making up for the lack of productivity last year by being extra productive here. This year it is going to be a bumper crop of apricots, peaches, apples, right? Everybody who's got fruit trees right at the base of the mountains, and there's a lot of fruit trees in all of the, this, these subdivisions close to the mountains. You're probably going to produce a lot of food, and that is going to be attractive to the bears, particularly if things get hot and dry like they normally do, and there's not a lot of other food resources. So as the fruit ripens, pick it. Don't let it sit around. Don't let it fall on the ground. That rotting fruit smells very, very strongly to bears, and it smells good, and they want to come eat it. Um, don't put your garbage out until the actual day of pickup. 
keep barbecue grills and things like that inside in a closed area in an outbuilding, something like that in the garage. Same for the garbage. Don't feed the pets outside. If you have a water feature in the yard, a pond, wildlife is, you know, part of the reason you have that is wildlife, but bears are gonna come drink out of it if they're, if it's an option and, and don't be surprised. Any place in the wildland urban interface, anywhere where you're really adjacent to bear habitat, there's going to be the potential that bears are gonna come investigate what you have if you don't provide them with food, they won't stick around. Unfortunately, if you do provide them with food, they may come back and we may have to remove them and that would be lethally most times. If you see a bear in the woods, take a look at it, stay back. Don't, you know, if, if it knows you're there, it's not liable to bumble across you. Um, they're 99.99% of the time not dangerous. Um, if, they, if they do approach you, scare, scare them off. Throw rocks at them, yell, scream, make a lot of noise, hit them with a stick if they get that close, fight back. But most of the time, just enjoy it, stay, keep a safe distance, maintain a safe distance like you would from a dog or anything else that has the potential to bite you. And you're probably gonna just get to enjoy the experience.